In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome to Comet Chasing, where we track the fuzzy wonders of our solar system. This month we- Hold on, we have breaking news. I've always wanted to do that. What you got? There's a newly discovered object that appears to have come from outside our solar system. Wow, that's pretty cool news. Only two objects from outside the solar system have been seen before. Yes, and now it's three. Let's start by recapping the exciting events as they unfolded over the last few days. An object was discovered on July 1st by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, ATLAS, Survey Telescope at Rio Hurtado, Chile. The object was placed on the NEOCP, which stands for Near Earth Object Confirmation Page of the Minor Planet Center. New objects are listed there so that other observers can make follow-up observations, including searching archival images that the object might have appeared on, but was missed. Newly discovered objects need to move enough on the sky so that we can compute a reliable orbit. So the idea is to have enough data to compute the orbit as soon as possible. Once that happens, a Minor Planet Electronic Circular, or MPEC, will be released. And that's when the object will get its official designation. Oh wait, more breaking news. As we were recording, the Minor Planet Center has released an official MPEC. The official designation is now 3i Atlas. The 3i means it's the third known interstellar object. And it was of course discovered by the Atlas survey. The media will no doubt refer to this as Comet Atlas, ignoring the fact that half the comets out there right now were also discovered by the Atlas survey, so have the same name. We will call it 3i Atlas, or just 3i. 3i was first brought to the attention of the wider minor planet community by Andrew Lowe on July 1st, drawing attention to its unusual orbit solutions. Other observers soon chimed in, pointing out that it was very likely interstellar in nature. We can tell objects that come from outside of the solar system because of their large velocities relative to the sun, which calculations for 3i consistently show. In fact, if you try to calculate an orbit forcing it to be from within the solar system, it just doesn't work very well. At that point, we could be relatively certain that it was in fact interstellar. We also know that it's currently about 4.5 astronomical units from the Sun and inbound. It will pass closest to the Sun on October 29th at a distance of 1.3 astronomical units. Is it a comet? The only way to separate comets from minor planets at this distance is to look for a bit of fuzz around the object, aka a coma, on images. But on July 2nd, as we were preparing this report, the object was moved to the PCCP list, which is the Potential Comet Confirmation page. Apparently someone had noticed some fuzz with a very large professional telescope, and we officially now have an interstellar comet. Another thing we know is that it'll pass within 0.5 astronomical units of Mars on October 2nd, so Martians will get a pretty good view. And hey, we know some Martians. We have landers, and better yet, spacecraft with cameras orbiting Mars, so we might potentially get an image from them. But don't expect too much, as these cameras weren't meant for imaging comets. Here is a look at the orbit. If you're familiar with comet orbits, this one should immediately look different. Most comets have a closed orbit, from making a near circle to an elongated ellipse, and even a very elongated parabola. But the orbit on this one never closes. This comet is just zipping along, and when it passes nearest to the Sun, the orbit is bent, and then it continues to zip back out into interstellar space but with a very different trajectory. So I noticed that you didn't lead with the great view we're going to get from Earth. Yeah, we won't be getting a great view, as it's on the wrong side of the Sun when closest to it. We can say, very roughly, that it may be detectable in the eyepiece of larger telescopes come November. But as a comet that's still far out, it may brighten significantly before then, and in that case it might be visible in many amateur telescopes, it will, of course, be a target for imaging. Even now it can be imaged in the more sophisticated amateur telescopes equipped with a camera. I have to say that the prospect of seeing a comet from another star system in the eyepiece is pretty exciting. Okay, so that's three interstellar objects discovered in the last eight years. Why didn't we start seeing them before that? That's a good question, Les. The quick answer is that today's surveys go a lot deeper, so they can find fainter objects way out in the solar system but there's really more to it than that. Unlike the past, we now have more or less continuous coverage of the entire sky, 
including the Southern Hemisphere and our worldwide networks of astronomers, allow us to follow up quickly. It's quite possible that we've spotted interstellar objects before, but weren't able to track them long enough to realize it. That, and before the first one was discovered, our automated software systems, which didn't consider orbits originating from outside of the solar system, may have been throwing out so much data that the object was lost, or at least not tracked well enough to recognize it. Even now, it takes a person or persons to notice the weird object and follow up on it. Remember, it's a big solar system out there. We've discovered over 8,000 minor planets so far this year alone. Think of it like fishing with a net. There are a lot of fish in the water. If we go deeper and use a finer net to get the littler ones, we can capture more fish. Even then, we're not getting all of them. But our chances of finding a rare fish go way up. So, it's likely that these interstellar objects are somewhat rare, and we simply didn't have the resources in place to easily catch them before. And now that the Vera Rubin telescope is coming online, we can expect many more interstellar objects in the coming decade. But is it aliens? People are going to try to tie this comet to aliens. But Greg says to think of it this way. Imagine one day you go outside and it's raining just a little bit, with only a drop here and there. You put your hand out and a drop happens to land on it. That was pretty lucky, given that there are so few drops falling. But as you look at the tiny puddle of water in your hand, you know that millions of raindrops fall to the earth every day. There is no reason at all to think there is anything special about the one that landed in your hand. Consider that stars forming must eject large numbers of small pieces of ice and rock into interstellar space. These are like the billions of raindrops. Even so, space is big, really big. Because it's so big, this debris only rarely falls toward the sun, and we now have caught one of these chunks of ice on its way down. There is no reason to think our chunk of ice is any more special than our raindrop. We don't need aliens to explain either of them. Greg tells me that he's planning to image this comet every few weeks with the same telescope, so we'll be able to see how it progresses each month. We'll be sharing these images here. Until then, you can keep track of developments on the Comet Chasing webpage. Before you go, we do have a few other things to talk about, including a telescopic comet to report on this month. But before we do that, I wanted to share this fantastic image with you by Gerald Raymond. This image shows two comets side by side. The one on the left is 48P Johnson, and on the right is C2020, J2 Virskos. The tails are pointing the same direction, but not because they're moving in the same direction, but because they're pointing away from the sun. In fact, the comets are moving left and right in opposite directions in the sky. Sadly, neither of these comets is bright enough to see in a telescope. As for telescopes, C2025 K1 Atlas is a recent discovery that's currently brightening ahead of its date with the Sun on October 8th. It's currently predicted to reach maximum brightness of magnitude 7.5 in early October. Unfortunately, it exceeds the Bortle limit, which means that it is unlikely to survive perihelion passage, so it probably won't be available after October 8th. Current trends suggest that the best visibility will be in late August, possibly in small 4-inch telescopes. This month, 2025 K1 is visible in 12.5-inch or larger telescopes from a dark site at the end of July, within an hour or two of midnight. For southern latitudes, it'll be observable, albeit difficult, from July 25th to the end of the month. From 40 degrees north, it will be a bit better, being perceptible starting July 29th. Well, that's it for now. Keep your telescopes ready. Things are starting to pick up out there.